Stop me if you've heard this one. A method actor. I can't feel like I'm making a television show or I'm making a movie. I need to feel like these things are happening. King Lear. Traitors! You constrained and forced. A lovable Aussie. <laughs> and a former child star walk into a room. I'm a Pepsi. That's not a joke. That's the murderer's row of talent that stars in HBO's Succession. And today, we're focusing on one Roman Roy. Roy Boy's on tour, and we got him in all sizes. Alpha, beta, Find out how aggressively ignoring audition instructions, flirting with a coworker, and losing a sibling informed Kieran Culkin's portrayal of Roman Roy in Succession. But before we begin, let's take a second to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more behind the scenes deep dives into your favorite performances. For every like this video gets, we'll send a box of donuts to Kendall Roy's house. These are irrelevant. So. Oh no, 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 no. These, these are relevant donuts. And as always, spoilers ahead. Okay, don't touch any of her shit. Okay, so, uh, it's pretty We've pretty well covered Succession's ensemble cast, but in case this is your first time, Succession is a TV show about members of a media dynasty vying for a spot at the top. It's a pitch black comedy with endless zingers and boardroom drama conceived by former Veep writer Jesse Armstrong and the big shorts Adam McKay. When casting the show, Kieran Culkin was Jesse Armstrong's first choice to play Cousin Greg. Uh, if it is to be said, so it be, so it is. Hold on, we need to back up a bit. Kieran Culkin is a member of the Culkin performing family, which includes his brother Macaulay Culkin and five other siblings. Kieran started acting at the age of six, though he never really felt like he had a choice. I think it was sort of one of those I was just always doing it. You know, it's like you, you never really choose to go to school. From that early age, he was in movies like Home Alone and Father of the Bride. When he turned 20, Culkin got his first starring role in the cult classic, Igby Goes Down. In addition to featuring a stack cast of basically everyone who was cool in the early aughts, Igby also earned Culkin a lot of recognition. His performance got awards buzz, movie offers started pouring in, and Culkin ignored them. And I had like a flip out. I was like 20 and I was like, hold on, I have a career? And I think like, I've been doing this for 14 years and I never once decided for myself this is what I wanted to do. So I basically backed away for like two years. He spent that time figuring out if acting really was the path for him. Luckily for us, he decided that it was. He returned to acting in indie movies and spent a lot of time on stage on Broadway and London's West End. He even ended up meeting a future Succession castmate while treading the boards, but more on that later. Long story short, eventually he was asked to audition for Cousin Greg. Needless to say, that more timid part didn't speak to him. What was jumping off the page was all of Roman's lines. I'm actually gonna stand up if that's all right. My back is f I have a new trainer, so. So they made him laugh, and he was particularly taken with the part in the pilot where Roman offers a child a million dollar check and then rips it up in front of him. We don't have time to unpack the irony of a former child star picking that as his favorite scene, but wow, just wow. One million dollars. Instead of agreeing to come in for a Greg audition, Culkin picked three Roman scenes and taped himself reading them. I remember thinking I had the most fun that entire day and the day before, like rehearsing. I had so much fun playing that guy that if I didn't get the part, I had a really swell day. His day got even better when he was the first Roy sibling cast. When it comes to inhibiting the role of Roman, because I'm not one, I'm not one of these actors. I'm one of these. That means that instead of doing copious research, he works from the gut. Still, you can't deny that. A a lot of Culkin's roles up to this point have prepared him to step into these shoes. His years as a child actor made him a savant at memorizing lines quickly. This quirk sometimes gets on the nerves of more old school actors like Brian Cox, who prefers to rehearse a bit before shooting. And having Brian Cox yell at you definitely helps you play his rebellious son on screen. It's also likely that Culkin's relationship with his own father, Kit Culkin, someone his brother Macaulay has described as physically and mentally abusive, might have come into play when portraying the relationship between Logan and Roman, though Kieran himself has never made this connection on the record. Playing trust fund kid Igby in Igby Goes Down and a career as a well-paid child actor definitely gave Culkin some first-hand insight into the lives of the rich and famous. To that end, he decided one crucial thing about his career, Roman Roy has never had to face a consequence ever. This fact made him languid and careless. It also might explain why he flops into chairs like that. You would too if you could buy the building. For me and Shiv, the whole Kendall thing 
doesn't work. But if there's ever any doubt, there's a wealth consultant on set to help the actors tweak their behavior to mimic real life billionaires. Some of their insight is truly chilling, like literally. And like actually, they'll say something like, these people wouldn't have winter coats because they leave their building, they go into a car, they leave that car and go into their private jet. Who knew wanting to be warm was just for normal people? Yikes. Other than strategic coat snubbing, Culkin had to learn improv to keep up with the rest of the cast. It was hard at first, but eventually Culkin got so good he could walk onto scenes and improvise with actors he's never met before. What is this? A museum of wartime foods? This is for display, right? None of this is edible. He also admits that sometimes he improvises his own insults in character and blames them on writers if his scene partners get mad. By the way, if you disagree with anything we wrote in this script, we reserve the right to blame the writing on Fred. Hey, it's Fred! Jump scare. Despite claiming not to be a cerebral actor, he did draw inspiration from real life to inform Roman's sense of humor and delivery. In an interview with The Hollywood Reporter, he says Roman reminds him a lot of his late sister Cody. Cody was funny, man, he says. She was the funniest person in the family for sure and had a really dark sense of humor. He describes his sister as painfully shy. She had no interest in acting with a taste for other people's minor misfortunes. Someone tripping on a sidewalk would send her into peals of laughter. He also sees a lot of Cody and his on-screen sister Sarah Snook. This explains their hyper-realistic sibling chemistry on screen. He asked permission to slap her in this scene, and she responded by pulling out a chunk of his hair, and their clear just, platonic uh, chemistry off-screen. You know, he kind of realized that- I love you, Snook, um, so much. Wish you could be here. And you too, Jay, shut up. <laughs> she hates when I single out Snook as someone uh, that I love to work with. Um, so Jay, I'm gonna tell you right now, um, I, I think you are probably my favorite actor to do scenes with after Sarah Snook. As you might have guessed, he also has great on-screen and off-screen chemistry with J. Smith Cameron, who plays Jerry. Culkin met Smith Cameron when he was performing in her husband Kenneth Lonergan's plays on Broadway and in the West End. They've been friends for years and had a rapport that ended up in forming a TV relationship that's as spicy as it is hard to root for. Culkin said he started improvising body jokes and flirting with Smith Cameron's character, mostly to get her to break and laugh, but somehow this chemistry rubbed off. What I was told by um, Mark Myla, who directs like almost half the episodes, he's one of the producers of the show. He told me that he was in the edit for the, either the last or second to last episode. Apparently I said something really like gross sexual to Jerry and she like rolled her eyes and I walked away and I checked out her butt and then, and, but she didn't see. And then when I turned around, she checked out my butt and I didn't know that. He saw that in the edit and he was like, oh, these guys, Okay, there's a thing here. Culkin and Smith Cameron have both said that their dream is to film a love scene together and surprise their spouses with it. While that's not exactly a typical double date, it's still better than other TV relationships. Looking at you, Uncle of the Year, Damon Targaryen. All in all, even if Culkin's approach involves less research, classical training, or angst than some of his other coworkers. Pretend. <laughs> Just pretend. His performance is still electrifying, and you still can't help but get a little excited every time he comes on screen. For his part, Culkin says that Succession is the first role in all of his years in the business that really made him love acting. And clearly the business loves him back because he earned a Critics Choice Award. He was very Roman about it all, all things considered. Wow, thanks, shut up. Now I'm just making an ass of myself, but uh, yeah, thanks. You're never gonna do this for me again, thank you. We wouldn't be so sure of that, Kieran. That concludes our Succession series. We can't wait to see how this season pans out. Tell us which Roy sibling you most identify with and which actor's process you'd like to see us cover next in the comments below.